Hello and welcome to the Habit Coach podcast. I'm Ashton Doctor, your Habit Coach, and today we're going to be discussing something controversial, but we are not going to be making it controversial. All right? So we are going to be understanding different aspects of what has popularly become the carnivore diet. Now, what is the carnivore diet? We're going to deep dive into it. Now, this is not telling everybody to suddenly start eating meat. If you have moral issues about listening about this podcast, don't listen to the podcast. But to understand different perspectives, to understand what does a plant-based diet do versus what does a meat-based diet do, this podcast is going to deep dive into all these issues. So we have Sangeeta Iyer with me, and we're going to jump into understanding what a carnivore is. Sangeeta, welcome to the Happy Coach Podcast. Happy to be here. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. So carnivore. Hmm. I know that you have been stirring up a storm especially on your Twitter profile and everything and everyone's <laughs> been like oh how are you talking about meat and about what about vegetables and all of that right correct, correct. so before we get into the controversial aspects of it right. i think it's important to understand the journey hmm. how did you get to this place okay i'll try and keep it short um uh, i'm 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 born into a vegetarian household uh let me make no bones about that i was vegetarian can we do all puns intended yes. every time we talk about <laughs> all right so all no pun. puns bones in <laughs> yeah all right puns intended yeah correct <laughs> so uh, i make no bones about that mm-hmm. so <laughs> so vegetarian born into a vegetarian household born raised vegetarian was vegetarian almost 32 years of my life um have always been a chubby kid um uh i always used my personality to make up for the chubbiness like we always do right not that um, uh, not that uh, uh, you know my weight bothered me a lot or anything like that uh there there were slight vanity issues every girl who's young teenage or in their 20s likes to look good Absolutely. but with me quickly what happened is um once i got married my weight started piling on and and it's started translating into certain health issues very early in my life one of which was pcos um and the other one um uh, which uh, i was i was borderline uh, diabetic or what we call pre diabetic and all this by the time i had turned 30 wow and um um i i by then also had my son he was about a year old and i was just not feeling looking Uh, or even my blood markers were nothing like what a 30 year old young lady woman should be like and that really started my journey um uh, you know into this 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 world of what we call diets i i really do not like that word anymore um and it's terrible l- right the first three letters are die is die mm. exactly mm. it it seems so temporary and so fatal in Correct. in many ways but i did that uh, uh, ashtin for a very long time and i did what the mainstream asked me to do largely six meals a day meat is bad for you uh, uh, fat is not good for you cardio always I did all of that and I went in and anybody who's been ever on a journey of losing weight and gaining health knows how much of a toll this takes on your mind because yes. you're not doing this uh, in a single track fashion right there is uh, there are other things going on in your life this family this career there's up, ups and downs of regular life there was so I I was just not able to get my hands on why a simple thing like maintaining your weight is becoming so 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 difficult until i i turned about 35 exactly 10 years ago until i stumbled upon couple of things one was uh, a ketogenic lifestyle mm-hmm. um and second gradually like i always say when one door opens uh, through the world of algorithms other, other doors open and then fasting opened up for me interesting and that so you did in keto before fasting i did keto and then 6 months along with keto i started, started my fasting, fasting regimen also and i was i i heard you talk in in the other podcast that you were introduced to fasting when people never heard of no clue no about clue it about this was before keto and all of these became exactly. mainstream exactly yeah. people didn't even like if is is a is an acronym now hmm. at that time you fasted only for religious reasons and or uh it was basically just religious reasons nobody Correct. fasted and your parents said that you were starving not fasting uh, exactly mm. uh so i i i found this uh, this way this lifestyle and that slowly kind of led me uh 
into a world of nutrition that seems so contrarian to what mainstream was telling you and is still continuing to tell you mm. uh, where it said that you know animal based diets are actually more appropriate for human um, uh, physiology uh, they are more compatible for for your health uh, fasting is something that is ancestral and when i say ancestral not ancestral only from a religion or a mankind standpoint but from an evolutionary standpoint okay. right we never had food all the time therefore the human body is most suited to be in fed and fasted states regularly so when i started doing all of that i found that by the time i had turned 37 i had reversed my uh, 18 months i think i had i had put my pcod in remission i went to my gynac there was no cyst anymore lovely uh, um, i i dropped my weight to my high school weight mm-hmm. the last i was 55 56 kilos was when i was 13 and uh, 13. not yeah i was 13 <laughs> uh, and it, this is not just about one of course your blood markers and health the other thing is what it does to your mental state mm. right uh, the 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 level of focus the clarity uh, the fact that you're not always obsessing about what my next meal should be in what quantities am i eating the right combination all that went away and then suddenly i could focus on so many different things uh, 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 ashwin that it it now now when i find it really funny when people say oh you are you on a diet i said no i eat like this hmm. this is a lifestyle and uh, it is it is somewhere sad that unfortunately it's been called a fad when actually uh, evolutionarily if you see y- human beings have been omnivores right and what is fad is what we eat right now in okay. the last couple of hundred years yeah. so that's that's really my journey and once uh, once i started seeing proof of the pudding not just with me with friends and family about 3 years ago just before the pandemic began i wanted to share uh, this with everybody because i see the struggle all over me i'm i'm sure you see this too absolutely and um plus when 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 you're in a world of nutrition like mine it's not just about you know having a six pack abs this it, this is not about that it's about non communicable diseases you know your your metabolic syndrome which now plagues 80% of the population today Absolutely. and the solution really lies in nutrition because it's a nutrition based problem so that's what i started doing uh, since 2019 and here i am and the carnivore part started when so that began along with keto literally okay. so it so was keto carnivore it was keto carnivore i i first eliminated sugar grain uh and and then largely over a period of time i am almost 95% carnivore everything i eat comes out of an animal lovely uh it's not to say that i don't find merit in eating some plants i do but predominantly my nutrition comes from animal based sources so i have been out of the 10 years 8 years i have been literally uh keto carnivore that sort of a uh, 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 you know macro mm-hmm. uh, just to clarify i think this whole keto is kind of misunderstood and used um, very very loosely mm-hmm. a classic ketogenic diet where 70% of your macros come from fat is actually a therapeutic ketogenic diet it's not meant for the masses it's Correct. meant for certain very clear medical conditions where m- metabolizing glucose by the brain uh becomes an issue mm. it's clearly in the cases of epilepsy and now it's emerging in cases of what we call nutritional psychiatry yeah. right where schizophrenia depression etc are being used alzheimers are being used um, uh, the ketogenic diet is being used but for a normal population a classic therapeutic ketogenic diet is not advisable so i i just thought i'll leave it there uh, because there is a lot of uh, mis- lot of misunderstanding, misunderstanding yes, around these everybody interchanges these terms a lot and and for example you know people think it's a bacon and cheese diet it's not a bacon and cheese diet uh that's that's reducing it to its very narrow um, you know scope but the problem is it is introduced to you as a bacon and cheese diet unfortunately you know like the first time i heard of a ketogenic diet was this friend of mine that said that ashin i have dropped so much weight eating bacon i was like what yeah all i do is i wake up and eat bacon then i have bacon in for lunch and i have bacon for dinner it is amazing and i was like 
dude, is that like right? Is that yeah, healthy? Yeah, that, that, that is not enough. Right? That like is not this. enough. While bacon is great and it can be included, uh, the right sources of bacon Absolutely. can be included in your diet. Similar things I also hear. Uh, I just put uh, 500 grams of cheese on top of anything. Mm. So you take because, rice and you add yeah. 500 tons of cheese and then it's, <laughs> and then it's a keto diet. Mm. But a keto diet starts with where your sources of carbohydrates are reduced to less than 20, sometimes even 10 grams. Correct. And so I think it's very important to people to understand what a classic therapeutic ketogenic diet is, what a low-carb diet is, what a carnivore diet is. Uh, but for me, I feel for the regular population, a low-carb diet, uh, because if I talk about carnivore, not everybody, not that I want anybody to adopt it, mm. a low-carb diet from an Indian cultural standpoint and a social milieu, given that that is what is causing the problem, when you keep your carb consumption to about 100 grams and lower uh, from, from good unrefined sources, this doesn't mean that you can cheat with a pani puri and a pizza every other day, doesn't serve, you know, serve the purpose. Correct. That kind of helps. So, at some point, keto, uh, uh, you know, what we call um, uh, low-carb, high-fat, carnivore are all subsets of the low-carb diet. Correct. It, in fact, your journey starts from there. Correct. But I want to uh, yeah. talk about two aspects from your story. And yes. This is just me analyzing it. Yes. The first is that many times when we look at people and we, you know, see people who are overweight, the first thing we think of them is indiscipline. Right? That Correct. unfortunately is something that people and then fat shaming and all of that starts from You're there. a glutton and you're, you're glutton. lazy. But the thing is that I've seen people who are overweight who have the most amount of discipline because they are trying everything. They are doing, like you said, they're doing their cardio, they're doing their six, six meals, they're doing all of that. Yeah. And still there's no change because they don't have the right information. That's right. So the important thing to understand is not, especially for people listening to the podcast who've been struggling with weight issues for a really long time. It's a compassionate statement that I'm making, saying that you don't lack discipline, you're not lazy, get those words out of your system, it's just probably that you don't have the right information right. for what your body needs. So right. getting that in place is one of the great starting points for right. everything that we're going to be discussing, especially Correct. now and As a segue into that, I'll tell you why people are struggling so much and find failure. Unfortunately, is this entire calorie in, calorie out yes. paradigm. Oh God, calorie in, calorie out is one of the biggest lies that exactly. exists. Exactly, you know. Don't eat 50,000 calories, obviously, because yeah. you're not stupid, but Nobody it eats. doesn't mean that. Exactly, yeah. so, so while energy intake matters mm -hmm. and energy expenditure matters, to reduce it to mathematics is really, really foolish. And unfortunately, people have made it sound so simple that, hey, you know what? Every day you have to be at a 500 calorie deficit. In a, a week, it comes to 3,500 calories. 3,500 calories is what is needed to burn half a kilo or one pound. And that's how you lose weight. No, that's not how you lose weight. Because by that math, you could be eating, you could be drinking um, um, uh, 100 ml of Coke. You could be drinking 100 ml of bone broth. You could be eating uh, 100 grams of sugar. You could be eating 100 grams of chicken. And you're telling me that the body metabolizes everything equally? No. Unfortunately, this is the paradigm where where people really, really are counting and counting and counting. And frankly, it's not sustainable. They give up. And then these um, phases of, you know, effort, mm -hmm. let me just eat. It's mm -hmm. not working. And then you go through the shame and the guilt and then you start from square one again. You're absolutely right. It's not your fault. You don't have the right information. Plus, our food environment doesn't help. Do you know how a calorie is measured? Do you know what a calorie is? It's a, it's a, uh, uh, it's a unit of mass, right? It's a unit of... Heating heat, up heat, exactly. A uh, hundred ml of water by one degree, the amount Correct. of heat needed for I think hundred ml or ten to ml. To boil, one, not to boil, to by one degree, to increase it by one degree is one calorie. Is that, okay, something okay, like that. Okay, something like that. So yeah. the whole idea I have, is, I have, I have decided to forget that <laughs> because it's of no use. It's used for debunking these things. <laughs> Correct. Which is what we're going to be doing in this Correct. next segment. Okay, now the reason why I want to do this, so I've understood the low carb part, and I think many people have understood that low carb itself is 
a, a, a good way of living. Yes. Now, I want to talk about plants. Hmm. Okay, now this is something that I'm very passionate about because I did a ton of research on plants itself and if plants are actually good for the body. Hmm. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you, are plants good for the body? And you're going to give me one reason why they're not or why they are. And I'm hmm. going to give one reason why they're not or why they are. And we're going to do a jugal bandi of this back and forth. Does this work? Sounds in- yeah, sounds interesting. I'll try. Okay, yes. so... Go. So, plants. Good, bad. Give me one topic. Uh, bad. Tell me why. Anti-nutrients. Okay. What is that? Uh, plants are also living creatures. Mm. Uh, they cannot run away. So, they have built-in defense mechanisms. And these defense mechanisms come in the form of anti-nutrients. And some of them are lectins, oxalates. Uh, these are the ones that are found in your plants. Therefore, uh, to uh, whenever you have to eat a plant, you have to either ferment it, cook it, soak it, boil it. You have to do something to it so that the anti-nutrient profile is lowered for human digestion. So now let's break up these three anti-nutrients. Okay? Right. So what are lectins? So lectins are basically found, um, like I said, it's, it's something that that prohibits you from eating the plant and from digesting the entire nutrients of the plant because a plant inherently does not want to be eaten. Correct. For example, lectin is found in soy. Hmm. Okay, They are a, a, a gut irritant. Uh, they, al- they also don't allow your thyroid function to work properly. Uh, they are also found in uh, what we call, what Indians love, uh, rajma, chole, chana. Uh, so everybody knows somebody in their house who, despite how these pulses or legumes are made, there is a sense of bloating, there is flatulence, there is a Chernobyl-esque hmm. effect that is caused in the house. Kaboom. Kaboom, exactly. Mm-hmm. All these are functions of these anti-nutrients that despite this amount of cooking, to a large majority of the population, they cause a problem. Uh, so can I take over the lectins part because sure. there's something that I'm very passionate about please because, of course you can so anyone who wants to understand about lectins has to read this book by Dr. Gundry called The Plant Paradox okay it will yes. put everything in perspective for you Correct. but the interesting thing is that plant proteins hmm. that cause this are called lectins so the, they're plant proteins Correct. in that sense and for example our most famous one is gluten Hmm. So gluten is technically a lectin and gluten as a plant protein comes in and tears up your gut lining, etc. And then starts your leaky gut as one of the big things. Now, what's interesting is people say, but I am not gluten intolerant. Hmm. And the truth is every single human being is gluten intolerant. Hmm. It is just that it is in varying degrees. Right. And all everyone is affected by gluten in some way or the other. Yeah. And there's tons of research that happens on this. Correct. Now, the interesting food, sorry. I was saying the Wheat Belly, Hmm. the other book. Oh, Wheat Belly, yeah. Wheat Belly, Grain Brain. And Grain Brain. These are the other two books that talk about the uh, intolerance to gluten and why it is such a... Uh, it's such a massive issue with with us consuming wheat. Yeah. Sorry, continue. No, and it's so interesting. When was wheat first cultivated? Amas was during the Egyptian civilization. Correct. And that was when the first signs of tooth decay started coming up. Correct. Till then, there are no evidence of tooth decay till the uh, Egyptian civilization. Absolutely. So it's so interesting seeing all these things and how our cultures taken these foods for granted. Right. Because you needed a high for lack of a better word, calorie source to feed so many people, you, yeah. all these grains came into being. Actually, you needed a widely available, cheap calorie source. Cheap calorie source. These are not expensive sources. So you can do many calories in a cheaper manner Correct. to feed a larger population. That's what grain and cereals do, unfortunately. It's crazy. Yeah, it is. So it the is. other ones that are that have lectins are squashes. So all your cucumbers and all of this fall into this category. Yeah. And I love having this conversation with people because they're like, don't you diss on my cucumber. And I was like, dude, you know your cucumber is so bad for you. Like, no, no, how can it be? And I was like, remember when you were you, ha- you had a grandparent and your grandparent used to cut the cucumber for you. What did and, they do? And do that. They used to take the top off and then they used to rub, s- rub something salt off. Salt in it. Yeah. But what were they taking off? What was the word that they used? Uska zher nikalo. Yeah. Right? Uska Kadwa z- zeher is what they used to call it. Zeher nikalo. That yes. means you're saying that there is a poison in it. Yes. There is a toxin in it that you have Correct. to remove. Correct. Right? Why are you eating it? Correct. And uh, then obviously we have nightshades. So our nightshades yeah. are full of lectins. I think one of the common, common things, if you'd like to take this hmm. on, that you must address is oxalates. 
the kidney stone problem yes. which is so common which people don't realize is spinach uh and we think it's iron and you don't absorb the iron from the spinach to no. begin with uh if you ever have a kidney stone issue they are um oxalates calcium oxalate crystals yes. and that's what especially juicing your food does yeah i went so, through a whole juicing phase so i will admit to it same you here yeah. i ha- i think all of us who've been uh, who've been around for a while yeah. experimenting with with nutrition have done all of this even i'll admit to it mm. it's only taken me to the crapper multiple times it's mm. done nothing else to my body correct and the interesting thing about oxalates is obviously kidney stones but for example kale and yeah. the crystals that they form yeah. certain women have this problem of the these crystals forming in their vagina and right. making it extremely painful, painful. Yeah. right so these are things that are happening because of the plants that you're eating yeah. do you know how kale became popular this is one of my favorite stories no i don't but i have tried to consume it and i could never for some reason and i ditched it <laughs> Kale is evil. So kale started because. Um, Sorry if I'm not wrong. It used to be a decorative plant, correct. right? Oh, there I go. I think I. But tell me the story so for the audience. So pizza hut used yeah. to use it as a decoration for <laughs> its salad bar. Correct. So you know the green stuff on the side of the salad yeah, bar that was yeah. supposed to be kept to just make everything look green. Yeah. So because people saw it, that they started taking it and eating it, <laughs> and that's how it became a superfood. It has no consequence. Nobody has done any research on it being a superfood. It has. It was just pop culture and three magazines, like I yeah. said in the beginning of this in, 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 in like this podcast, that it's all about knowing your information and information sources. Right. So it's crazy just how these things become popular. Correct. Correct. Yeah, but but the, I I did pick up on this trivia. I didn't remember the whole story, but I I it's did so remember that salad bar. that it was a decorative piece and people started eating it and then became a thing. I mean, talk about great marketing and PR. And the fact that they needed green on the salad bar because you could imagine what else was there in the salad. Yeah. 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 Exactly. I love it. Okay. So we, so that's oxalates. Right. Um, we've got our lectins. Yeah. Nightshades are again high in lectins, so you're potatoes your tomatoes um uh, your bengan brinjal brinjal yeah. bengan stands for begun no good yeah. right so we already know that from ayurveda correct so all of these are very interesting plants and i was sitting in to- uh, i was at a ayurvedic retreat hmm. a while back and hmm. i was talking to them on what kind of food you eat hmm. and they actually knocked off all these things that had lectins in them right right so there w- there was no bengan there was no tomato there was no potato on th- hmm. on the menu hmm. because they realized this back then hmm. and uh, last thing before we move on sure my friends always offer me salad hmm. right when you're having your yeah. meals what a salad cucumber and tomato correct both of them which are high in lectin yeah. i think no, why are you not eating you don't yeah. eat anything healthy i was like yeah. guys this is not yeah. and i'm not going to give you a lecture now because like otherwise you never invite me again for lunch yeah but you know a little while i think a couple of weeks ago when we were chatting on whatsapp you remember i told you that in 2011 12 i had this severe abdominal pain yeah. where in one trip i was coming back from goa and from the hotel i had to be straight admitted to the hospital oh. because i had a gut inflammation and the doctor praise him because ne- doctor will never admit to a plant being bad he told me stop eating raw plants yes. if you can give up plants you give up but raw definitely give up it's not working for you exactly um so i mean who knew that plants would take you to <laughs> to the, the hospital, hospital straight from the airport hmm. yeah the poison so, ivy yeah th- does that as well so the interesting thing is that like if we you know th- there is there's a, there are lots of debates on which is the best diet right right like you can debate this you can debate that like we are having this correct conversation yes. so we're just debating it out yeah. but there is no debate on what is one of the worst hmm. diets so we already know that like the sad which is the standard american yeah. diet is terrible yeah. but very close is the raw vegan diet i completely agree right yes. you feel amazing for the first year for the second year for the third year and after that it is one downhill slope yes you've had people on the raw vegan diet come to i've you? had yes i've had people from the raw vegan diet and i've had a case of a 28 year old who went uh, to do her masters um lost her period within 2 years yep. lost uh hair yeah. uh, nails um teeth uh, teeth that yeah off. and and almost was uh diagnosed uh, what do you call that uh, inexplained unfertility oh wow there was they couldn't find a like it, they couldn't 
find a diagnosis for it she came to me and this was about a year and a half back from a raw vegan i have we worked to transition her to a low carb animal based diet much better and i think um uh, 3 months ago the period has started fantastic and so i think that the raw vegan diet is just incompatible uh with human survival not thriving also yeah. survival yeah um and most people who are unfortunately i i don't want to sound controversial uh, ashtin but they're standing or 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 they are believing that they stand for something bigger therefore they take these uh, choices and stances uh, you know something bigger like anti cruelty something bigger like non violence something bigger like climate change but the body that you live in you're causing the most violence to that body yeah. right so i think you need to open your eyes to f- the greatest duty you have is first to self right uh mind body soul then everything else begins yeah. that's my humble uh, submission on this no absolutely and you know like even with the morality issues with with regards to diet and i know this will be controversial correct it's because we use this word called farming hmm right we hmm. use it as animal farming we call it plant farming but both of them are technically farming absolutely. that means you've taken one species of something you've artificially multiplied them yeah. you've kept them entrapped in a particular place yeah. and you're going to eat off them Correct. now whether you do that to animals yes who in water commas have feelings and you do that to plant who in water commas don't have feelings right. and we will debunk this as, <laughs> as this podcast goes on it is still farming right. so it is a systemic issue yeah for getting food to the kind of population that, that we have that we have become that we yes. become yes. if you have your own land if you're doing your own thing i think the morality of this becomes a little bit yes easier to, to yes. for you to digest yes. all puns intended yes so and and i say this again that you will find no uh, person who is a meat eater or now who's part of what we call the carnivore community hmm. who for even one minute agrees with the way animals are being farmed yes. not no. for a minute nobody will say that this is this good this is good yes. nobody will say that i don't care okay unfortunately there's none of us and these are th- these communities are small communities do not have the wherewithal to influence it at a large scale mm. level because this needs policy this needs economy this needs completely a regenerative culture which we are unable to influence yeah. so i again say this those who are slightly privileged find some farmer selling you know who owns a poultry and will get it from there knowing that that animal was treated well correct you know will do the best and there is a price to that yeah. now um unfortunately does this mean it is for the elite only no because fr- if you look at it from the grassroots level what is happening in india if you look at the anemia levels if you look at the zinc deficiency if you look at iron deficiency if you look at stunting uh wastage in children okay and i'm talking this and mass wastage in children muscle wastage muscle wastage wastage and hmm. stunting we're not our, our height is not increasing hmm. all of this is lack of animal based nutrition now when i say animal based nutrition at that grassroots level i'm not talking grass fed mutton correct i'm talking simple things like milk hmm. paneer eggs you know simple thing even these are going out of access for most people yes. because of this need to provide for cheap calories and therefore have your dals and but it's not complete nutrition yeah so these are both ends of the spectrum right so one we need we need a systemic change and you rightly said just because you're eating plants please don't assume that there is no violence involved yeah. the amount of mice rabbits the flora fauna that you displace the very fact that you're violent towards certain species you are hybridizing them and growing them suddenly loki looks like a banyan tree mm. uh, you know all these are not normal and they have their repercussions yeah absolutely and and like right he said the cruelty is not to the animal that you're eating the cruelty is to the animals that are around so like exactly. the mice that you have to kill all the other things the rodents that you have to displace the trees that you have to cut in order to yeah, be able to do yeah. your farming but coming back to the morality thing um have you read the secret life of pa- plants you have recommended i have not yet got it but i'm very interested to okay, know okay so 
guys, as you know, I'm a geek, so I've read all these books. I've even <laughs> read all the pro vegan, pro plant books. So, like all your how not to die, all of them, I've read them. It's good so, to read. I think it, you I think have to have both sides of the perspective. You need to know yes, these before yes, you make an yes. intelligent choice. Absolutely. And there are certain plants that I will still choose to eat. Correct. There are certain things that I will still have. Correct. But understanding this is important. Knowing Correct. what you put in your mouth and your body is important. So there was this interesting study. Right. Did I ever tell you? Did I discuss this on the phone with you? No, you just said we will have, we'll yeah, talk about we'll, it on the podcast. Yeah, okay. sure. So the study goes like this: there was a plant that was attached to a galvanic skin response monitor. So basically, hmm. it measures the electric uh, frequency of that plant at that point right. of time. Somebody came in, hmm. walked around the plant. There was no change to it. Hmm. Plucked a leaf. Hmm. The plant went bananas. Okay, all the, the scales, the sensors went as if like you know, full trauma had been yeah. done to this plant all over the place, and it was like that for a couple of hours. Hmm. Another person walks in hmm. after the plant has settled. Hmm. Another person walks in, not the same chap. Hmm. Walks around the plant, no change to the plant. Hmm. The same guy who pulled out that leaf comes in, walks comes in, in walks around the plant, goes bananas. Without touching the Without plant. Without touching the plant, walking around the table. Wow. Now, if this hasn't put goosebumps on you... It does. Right? Yeah. This is what we are thinking of as not having emotions, not having feelings, and not mm. having anything. Mm. It's just that we haven't understood how to see that emotion or that, that feeling in this or particular Or we don't plant. know how that living uh, creature communicates. Yes. Because we see other things like blood gore in... Uh, pardon me for this uh, description, but you don't see that in a plant, right? Yeah. So you assume it's fairly non-violent. Correct. So we have the sap of a plant, Correct. which could possibly be the blood of the plant. Absolutely. Right? And we put yeah. it on our pancakes and have it. But Correct. that's the same thing, right? Correct. It's just that we have... Our lens of looking at a plant is very different from the lens of looking at yeah. an animal, which is yeah. why this as a as a pain issue comes up mm. so the way that I like to deal with this is how if you read The Prophet by Khalil Gibran yes so he talks about this he says that no matter what you eat you will cause something to die Correct. so if that is happening if you have if you have meat you're going to cause something to die if you have a plant you're going to cause yeah. something to die so you might as well give it the most amount of gratitude thanks before yeah. you put it in your mouth yeah. don't waste it treat it well because yeah. ultimately that is life yeah actually if you if you so how I deal with it is somebody's food for you, you are food for somebody. Yes. Okay. You have to be, ultimately, we're all part of nature. When we die, if you are buried, you will be eaten. If you are cremated, you turn into carbon. Right? Hmm. So ultimately, you disappear back into the environment. So if you, therefore, if you look at cultures or, or, or tribes, they ate nose to tail. Yes. Ev they revered that kill so much because a, a living creature has died to serve a tribe. And Every, there was always a prayer when the... When there was the, a ritual. There was a ritual. There, there was, was a, a prayer. Something. There was something that was happened something, right? when the animal was And killed. every part of that animal was put to use, including skin, so that you you used... You you honored that that creature, which is why people say that when you actually hunt your food, you mm. have more respect for your food. Correct. So I deal with it this way, and of course today I can't hunt. Mm. I'd love to. Mm. Uh, maybe it, it'll be a different uh, experience uh, from a spiritual standpoint. But um, but I I therefore uh, just say that you know this is the dharma needed for my body. Mm. I respect this and. Uh, it's a non-issue in my head because I think spirituality means many things to many people. And for me, at the foremost, taking care of yourself is the first first rule. Yeah, taking care of yourself, very important. Yeah, because you do not want to be a burden on your kit and kin. Hmm. You do not want to be a burden on the government. You hmm. do, I, I do not want to be a burden on somebody else's tax-paying money for, for medical help and things like that. Hmm. You know, If I come to look at the more modern side of things. Now let's talk about some pros for plants. Okay. Sure. Um, there is um, the carnivore community may not like this, but it's okay. I have a point of view. Uh, there is a whole debate that fiber is a subset of carbohydrates and therefore it is completely, um, completely uh, unessential. I don't think so. I think that there are a lot of us who uh, kind of need and make good use of that fiber. So if you choose your plants well um, and if you know the way to cook it, plants are great source of fiber so i think that is one i think uh, to add to this yes 
the fiber in the plant I like to think of as the fodder for my gut bacteria. Exactly. So, for example, having your kimchi, having your sauerkraut, having Absolutely. all those as vegetables. Even what we do with our onions, na sirke wala pyaaz. Sirke wala pla. Uh, you know the 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 vinegar dipped onions that you find in the dabas. Correct. There is a reason. why that is done unfortunately we think it's a daba speciality but there is a reason no no it's actually so a health right. reason and lowers your blood sugar exactly exactly hmm. so i think that that um, fermented foods are good for your uh, uh, gut microbiome absolutely they help you uh, also oh also in the presence of vegetables when you take um, a, a high carbohydrate food say for example if you take chawal with some saag and and a, and a whole lot of sabji the the, the glycemic load is kind of controlled mm. right so these are positive uh, that means that your blood sugar doesn't spike as much uh, as exactly, it would without exactly. the vegetable yes mm. yes versus if you were just eating rice and pouring some rasam or sambar over it Correct. that is why the indian thali also or even if it is vegetarian it is designed with a whole lot of vegetables mm. in that sense yes. right so that's a a, a major uh, uh, advantage i think um, the other advantage is um we were hunters and gatherers we mm. were not hunters only yes right so in periods when there was either no meat available or there was a, some sort of a um, catastrophic uh, natural calamity or or the, the 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 climate wasn't right we foraged for tubers we foraged for certain foods that we intrinsically knew are edible mm. so if that's part of our evolutionary uh, milieu i don't see why we cannot still consume some amount of plant if you if if you want right now so yeah absolutely it, these plants are actually things that certain plants we've grown up with correct right for example the tubers the root vegetables correct. even though carrots now are 35000 times larger than what they used to be <laughs> Correct. Just the same way that our chickens are thirty-five thousand times even they larger. Are. Oh than my God! There was a time when a chicken breast would be the size of your palm. Yeah. Now I I don't know what's wrong with them. No, no, now they don't fit into the frying pan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so the same way, everything's become larger because of well, commercialization, capitalization, yeah, and all correct. of that. But importantly, these plants were things that worked with us. Yeah. So a pro for me for plants is to think of plants as medicine. Yes. Right. So if you think of certain plants, certain roots as medicine, then you start looking at them through a different lens Correct. altogether. So your turmeric, your ashwagandha, these are things, all Correct. plants. Correct. All your medicines, almost all your medicines that you consume Correct. were originally from plants that Correct. have been distilled out. Right. Right. Absolutely. So using plants as medicine is a fantastic way of thinking about this right. as well. Right. Right. So. that's also why we use herbs in our kitchens yes. right herbs are a medicine cabinet yeah and that is why it's it's we take a pinch of pepper and a pinch of haldi uh, we don't take 1 kilo of dhania and put it in our food right mm. it's a small bunch that's why we that's why plants are medicinal because they are supposed to be used in the right way in the right time in the right quantities food is largely animal sourced correct that's that's the lens right very, very rightly said absolutely the 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 things that are doing good in terms of the active compounds in your in your hmm. plants hmm. very good like are you saying that i can't have coffee if i'm not plant based no obviously not <laughs> i'm not going to give up my coffee i'm not going to give up my tea so these are no, clearly things that are no but you know you know are... what is happening on the other side and we must acknowledge this what was um the wisdom that ayurveda gave us or the indian now suddenly people are consuming uh, turmeric what is that curcumin tablets hmm. by the tons and they are f- figuring out that it's causing liver toxicity hmm. now we've gone the other way hmm. right so i think if you if you go back to using food the way it is supposed to be used go back to its origin eat it as close to nature not in some pill form you know everything athletic greens everything is a powder yeah right what is what is all of this right if you want to eat herbs eat it the way it's supposed to be eaten mm. if you want to eat plant please eat plant don't eat plant based mm. come to that soy discussion later no <laughs> <laughs> anyway oh god, god soy yeah. soy 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 we can have an yeah. entire podcast on that soy that is a completely different one yeah you want to get into soy right now i've gotten into it a thousand times and uh, soy is so 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 bad for the system i don't know why okay chalo soy what is soy Soy is basically um, it's a plant based uh, uh, protein. Mm. Um, a, it's not at all native to India. Mm. Okay. Uh, second, really, 
It's not. Okay. It came in about hundred years ago. Ah. Oh, uh, like potatoes. Potatoes potato are not native. Exactly. Neither, Neither are tomatoes. Neither are tomatoes. Right. Oh, you know the tomato story. Oh, can I do tomato story before? <laughs> okay, before. sure. This is this is like sure. So, tomatoes were brought in by the Spanish when they went and conquered South America, hmm. right? So they came back and gave this uh, pomodoro. Hmm. Pomodoro, as in the uh, a golden apple, hmm. right? Pom, hmm. um, apple, the hmm. oro, gold. Hmm. And it was presented to Italy hmm. as a plant for you to have. Hmm. And nobody in Italy touched it. Hmm. Now, when we think about Italian cuisine, what is the first thing that we think about? The tomato base on pizza. Tomato base on pizza. All tomato, everywhere. Uh, correct, yeah. red pasta, all of that. All of tomato, that. tomato, tomato. Nobody in Italy touched the tomato because they all thought it was a poisonous fruit. And remember, hmm. it's a fruit, it's not, not a vegetable. It's not a vegetable, correct. Right? They all thought it was a poisonous fruit. And there is one instance of a man writing a suicide note <laughs> saying that I will die tomorrow by eating seven tomatoes. Right. Okay. Now that is what <laughs> it was. Why did it become popular in, in, in um, Italy is because they started growing the Roma tomato, which is hmm. very different from the tomato that we eat here. Hmm. And Roma tomatoes have a thick flesh, Correct. very few seeds and a very thin skin. And the lectins are in the skin and in the seeds and not in the flesh. So when they blanch it, they remove, they the, remove it. They remove yeah. the, the skin and they remove the seeds, seeds and then it's correct. perfectly fine, fine to consume. To eat. Yeah. But we eat everything, yeah, right? Yeah. So it's so interesting understanding how food came about. Yeah. And then you'd probably start questioning things. Yeah. So going back to soy, soy. soy's origins are largely uh, South Asian. Hmm. And they had a, like they cured their meats. Uh, in salt, if you've seen any K drama, you will know how they cure their meat in salt bins, uh, hidden in the basement. That's how they ferment their vegetables. And kimchi is made the same e way. Exactly. Soy also, uh, you know, they fermented it and they used it in miso and all those recipes. Now, unfortunately, today soy is completely genetically modified. Large lands of soy are being grown as an option to um, for meat uh, because of all this propaganda. I don't want to get into that as to you know no, no, cows are not, causing yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever. But cow the, farts, the, cow burps, you know, exactly mm. methane and all of that. But one common question that you should always con you should always question when something starts to being pushed down mainstream with massive marketing dollars around it, mm. like kale was, like quinoa was, like all your so-called heart healthy vegetable oils, which are neither heart healthy nor from a vegetable, mm. you have to start questioning why that is happening at a very common sense level. Second, there is absolutely no nutrition that in 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 what in the soy that India consumes, either in the form of soy chunk, okay, which is the most disgusting form of soy that is being peddled by certain vegetarian gym trainers because they lack the choice or, or you know, there is something to prove that you should eat that. And it tastes like meat. And it tastes like meat. Mm. And then it has, it has... Uh, it has become another more disgusting version called the soy cha chap, which is found on roads, which the, the poor person... Going there is almost eating it, thinking that I'm eating tandoori chicken yeah. equivalent, mm. right? So, tons of reasons. And I don't even want to get into the phytoestrogen argument because I've gotten into this a thousand times. That is the last of my arguments. Oh, really? That, I thought that, that would be up there in the top. No, there, I mean, if you actually look up the research, mm. if there are hundred papers that talk about it being phytoestrogenic, there are hundred papers that debunk it. Mm. And unfortunately... People in the in, in in a layman doesn't understand how funding, how research, uh, how nutrition studies all happen, mm. right? Mm. Any study uh, you can what is what is that called? Hacking p values. Yeah. You can do all of that in the nutrition world, right? But fundamentally, you need to question that. Usually, protein is slightly expensive. What is it that you are eating, which is hanging like pan? Uh, you know, like like. Pan masala on a on a on a cigarette shop in in those packets. That's not food. Mm. Um, instead, you know, it, go go for paneer, go for milk, go for dahi if you're a vegetarian. Um, if you can afford it, maybe once in a while you can do some whey protein. But this is again what I say: the effect of food doesn't show up tomorrow. Yeah. It's not like you start eating sugary foods or a high carbohydrate diet today, you'll show up with diabetes in six months. You'll show up after two decades. Mm. So there is a gestation period. The body is very, very tolerant. And that's where I have a problem with soy because, you know, Dr. Veena Shatrugna, 
who was the ex director of uh, ni in india you must look up her youtube videos there was a research done by her presented to the committee which ruled out soy as any source of protein because of its anti nutrient value wow and this is a government institution and now soy is being peddled as this uh at one end you have soy chunks which is very cheap and dirtily produced and not good for your health at the other end you have this lab made gunk with 35 ingredients sold as uh, all this shakahari and i don't know what it is called and and you have celebrities endorsing it making masses eat it so no i think worse is when it is uh, put into baby feed uh, yeah yeah so, correct so it's a big part of baby feed baby as feed well baby feed too yes right? so i think it is prevalent because Everywhere. it is so cheap to make and grow yeah um and and so many um so many uh, by products of it you will be hard pressed to find any sauce ketchup any any sort of a um like a salsa sauce or anything in the supermarket that doesn't have soybean oil yep you you will come out of the shop you will you it is it's tough if you ever look at the ingredients you'll start seeing what what all you're eating you're eating and um you know the thing is that soy like you said soy was fermented which is why it was okay to eat exactly. because the bacteria ate up the things that the anti nutrients correct that that correct. are toxic correct. to us correct. now that stopped even for example your tofu tofu soy yeah tofu was always fermented now yeah. tofu is not fermented tofu yeah. is made much faster than it used to be Correct. made earlier Correct. soy sauce for example soy sauce was a fermented sauce which yes. is no longer fermented sauce Correct. so it's important to learn about food this way before we you know just like accept everything that's coming to yeah, us yeah and there is more to food than just what the label says mm. in terms of its macronutrient profile so 20 grams of protein 15 grams of carbs is that protein bioavailable to you how much of it is bioavailable to you what 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 does the other components of that food do to your stomach correct now this is the information that's missing in the puzzle right so if you have a packet of dal that says 9 grams of protein <laughs> you're not going to be able to use 9 grams of protein to make your muscle because you need the other aspects the other amino acids that are found in rice for example to create a complete profile i, I shared that tweet with you right that Which went, one <laughs> the one dear the people indians, attacked you on yeah dear indian sorry to break it to you but dal is a complex carbohydrate not no. a source of protein yeah and oh everyone lynched you for oh it God. yeah it's so it's the truth i'm sorry it is it is No that's the thing right we're so attached to our food and 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 for the longest time I avoided commenting on nutrition especially because it was so um yeah, inflammatory yeah very for, inflammatory for lack food of a wars, better word yeah food wars and and people take it very personally see yeah. when i say um please eat vegetarian if that's your choice but make sure that it is well formulated Correct. and supplemented with yeah Are you saying it's an inferior diet? Now you are putting the word in my mouth, mm. right? If you have, by definition, if any way of eating has to be supplemented with many things, it is lacking something, right? So just detach yourself from it. Like you would, would you choose your food options the way you chose your stock portfolio? Mm. How no? How what? But like what? Like you, most people choose stock shop, stock no. portfolio by asking their uncle. Okay, no, no, one second. It's the same no, thing. No, I'm just saying, uh-huh. if you are a, if you are a, um, if you are a smart investor, hmm. would you be okay with your stock portfolio giving you break even or negative returns? You are always looking for positive returns, hmm. right? Your food choices are also that. Correct. It's like a stock p- a portfolio. So have a variety that gives you a net positive, not a net negative. Yeah. Unfortunately, everything that we are eating is a net negative. So even for example, let's say that you are a dal rice consumer, right? There are still ways of making the dal rice healthier than they, it would have been otherwise. Yeah. So for example, soaking the dal, pressure cooking the dal, for example, Correct. is step one. The other is, for example, washing your rice, making sure that you cook the rice, cool the rice, Correct. and reheat the rice. Correct. Make sure that it is far healthier in Correct. terms of its glucose load. But we don't do these things because we don't know these things. And right. getting informed about maybe if you want to be vegetarian, continue be vegetarian, but make better choices in this. Yeah, yeah. I remember Game Changers came out, which mm. is a big, big, big documentary on Netflix. Mm. Right? It was obviously funded by the vegan lobby and all of that. Mm. We won't get into it. Maybe we will. Who knows? 
But the interesting thing was that James I, Cameron has just come out saying that uh, testosterone is toxic. Testosterone is toxic. Oh, <laughs> well, it's 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 a sad sad place to be in. Seriously, if testosterone is toxic, so all men are toxic. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, that's what he was saying. <sighs> so that basically he's saying that toxic max- Tox- masculinity, masculinity comes. and and. <laughs> what next? Estrogen is uh, what we should basically our sex hormones should just go away, and then what should we, we become? But robots, yeah, neutered. So, so, exactly. So the interesting thing is that um, so I decided, chalo, I will now experiment, hmm. and I will go vegan on Tuesdays and Thursdays. <laughs> okay, why not? Because we have our podcast coming out on Tuesdays and Thursdays. <laughs> I was just like two days in the week, chalo. But the in- most interesting thing happened. I could not eat vegetarian food outside the house. Because no restaurant serves vegeta- vegetables, yes. right? It's so interesting that you go out to eat a meal with somebody. They'll first ask you, you want to eat roti or rice? Mm. And I'm like, but neither of those are vegetables. Correct. Grains. Right? Huh. Mm. Achha, no, then you'll have a dal. That is also not a vegetable. Mm. So then what will you have? Paneer. That is also not a vegetable. <laughs> Abe, so then, then, then the entire conversation breaks down right there, right? Correct. So like, how, what, what are you going to eat? Palak? I can eat palak. Then what do you eat it with? Then just yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So it just completely breaks down when you start thinking about it because Correct. also society is not designed for a healthy vegetable vegetarian diet. Correct. First and foremost, when we like to call it a vegetarian diet or a it's a grainitarian diet. Hmm, it's a grainitarian diet. It's a or grain- the biggest uh, vegetable yeah. use is an aloo, which is not a vegetable. Which is not a vegetable, right? Mm-hmm. So, if if seventy to eighty percent of your uh, food intake or caloric value is coming from grain, you are not even a vegetarian. Mm. You're a grainitarian. Correct. And that is the starting point. And and what are grains? They're literally glucose and then why are you why are we getting attached to vegetarian non-vegetarian if you're a vegetarian eat a vegetarian diet Correct. and like you rightly said even if you were to go and eat a vegetable outside in a restaurant how is a bhindi cooked how like have you seen the vegetarian food outside can you eat it with that masala and all of that so it, it's not consumable so we are not geared even environmentally from an availability standpoint to eat a largely plant-based diet unless you're sitting at home and doing this where day you, in, day out. Yeah, where you have complete control, control over, over it. Control over it. And that's not practical at all points. Hmm. So what does a animal-based diet look like? So tell me two, three days of eating. What would it look like when you wake up in the morning? So again, you know, I, I, I just want... Ideal see. scenario. I'll, no, no, I'll tell you. Hmm. So... There is this misconception because of because this is they will say oh this is a West based concept and all of that. I kind of made it very easy. I made an you know there is an acronym called an animal based diet is MEDS okay hmm. meat eggs dairy seafood okay okay hmm. why is seafood not part of meat? It's a different profile uh, uh, of of meat that gives you certain nutrients that sometimes meat may not have, like iodine, selenium, all of that that is there in seafood. And it doesn't have cortisol, which we need to exactly, have. Exactly, okay, right? Hmm. And it doesn't come with high saturated fat, with which red meat gets a rap for, right? Like beef. All and your all prawns of and stuff? Prawns have cholesterol, hmm. but if you choose fish, etc., okay, it's, hmm. um, it's more... It's uh, more... Uh, DHEA and EPA and hmm. all of that. Right? Okay, Prawns cool. is an exception on cholesterol. Hmm. Or or if you eat mussels and all of that. Mussels, so, crabs, all of those. All of those are lean. The hmm. lean Crab is one of the leanest. Lobster crab is one of the leanest hmm. meat you can eat, right? So, so when you... Unless you put butter. <laughs> <laughs> butter, garlic, crab. Is but I love... <laughs> but that's what an animal-based diet allows you to true, do, right? True, when true, true, you true. can You can eat butter. Butter is great. Hmm. So when you kind of open up to these options, right? There is suddenly so much variety in your diet. So what does it look for me? I basically eat two meals a day. Okay. Uh, I have been eating two meals a day since 2016. Hmm. And I've been literally at that. So I al- I also always rotate my protein source depending upon what season it is. What So all this common sense. If it's Shravan. No, it's not common sense. Tell me. So if it's, if it's breeding season, I for will what? not. You know the Shravan that we do in Maharashtra and all of that. I don't eat the fish in that season. Okay, okay. Fish. N- natural, hmm. right? Hmm. Um, so... Usually my diet... I don't know any about this. So give me some gyan on this. Which, what are breathing seasons? What are times of month, year that you would not eat what? So 
go by go by the local culture hmm. okay so in maharashtra if you see there is a shravan season for about 40 days when they do not consume um uh, sea seafood okay. right because that is when it is the breeding season for the fish and that is when fishermen also don't go and kind of get their whatever hmm. right so that is one thing second is um if you if you look at um uh, meat okay don't try and source your meat out of an aged um uh animal okay okay now how will you know all of this you have to be doing some research and knowing and looking at your meat you will know by the color of the meat and the color of the fat and as to is that an aged animal or is that a animal that in the right time has been kind of uh, you know used to kind of give you its food and things like that you have to do a video on this huh yeah i'll do that hmm. uh so my meals usually are a combination of okay, fun fact for all the eggs that i am for i am allergic to the white of the egg really <laughs> how can you be allergic to the white i'm allergic to the protein of the egg and ah. i have a congenital allergy which okay. means it's by birth hmm. i have tried everything you hmm. know they say if you if you kind of feed the same food your allergy becomes better it's not doesn't happened work. doesn't work <laughs> especially when you have congenital grade 5 allergies it doesn't work khalas so yeah hmm. I, if i eat the protein i i kind of get hives and i my throat starts itching and i have to throw up so that's out of the question okay so i've tried to experiment with duck eggs and quail eggs hmm. even there there is something about the protein of the white that it doesn't work with me hmm. so my meals are mostly goat meat hmm. lamb fish uh some amount of uh, prawns uh a lot of buff uh and i kind of have minimized the chicken because i know i know no matter what this is more from a nutrient profile this is more uh, there beneficial now yes. i everybody asks me sangeeta how do you eat it you know because the culture is such that everything is a gravy hmm. i i make kebabs and like uh, uh, dry dry cuisines out of my food but i've also reached a, a, a place where if you give me butter chicken i will i can i can eat the butter chicken as is as well mm. um so this is largely what what i eat uh, on a daily basis it just rotates so if it's um, mutton in the morning it will be chicken in the night if it's fish in the afternoon it will be buff in the night and so i keep rotating this i don't get bored Uh, that's the other question that comes at me a lot now let's talk about what plants get included in this meal you completely is random probably once or twice in a week it will be some patta gobi some phool gobi and i don't think about it a lot and the reason i don't think about it a lot of people tell me how is your micronutrient profile in the absence of uh, in in the presence of a good carnivore diet which has meds right mm. plants render themselves useless for any micronutrients right so the minute i start doing bone broth i shared the picture with you this Correct. morning um so bone broth is a regular in my diet the minute i include organ meat which i have started including in the last 2 years so when i have all this all your vitamin c requirement and you know you'll have scurvy all these you know misconceptions kind of go away my vegetables is actually when i'm in somebody else's home and they have vegetables and i kind of just eat them otherwise i don't bother fruits i don't eat any fruit hmm. none it's been 5 years so my my fruit consumption happens in a conference room when out of everything else that's the only healthiest oh, you know what i mean sandwiches and muffins and chips and then if there is an apple i'll eat the apple so fruits are again very interesting highly debatable topic oh my god they are inflammatory to another level they are so inflammatory it's crazy so i have a very simple rule don't eat anything out of season for, for fruits correct and don't eat anything that you don't know where it came from correct so the only fruits i eat are from my farm or from my friends farm that's correct. it how oh, oh, i must say i love like now it's mulberry season hmm. in bombay so i eat some greek yogurt and mulberry so shetur ha ha hmm. so i eat that that local you know jo in in school स्कूल के बाहर बेर नहीं मिलता था दो बेर आई ईट ऑल दो विच आर सो फ्रूट बेसिकली आर सपोज टू बी लार्जली टाट एंड सार दे आर सपोज टू बी एक्सट्रीमली सीजनल दे आर नॉट सपोज टू बी अवेलेबल द वे दे आर अवेलेबल राइट नाउ एंड दे आर नॉट सपोज टू बी सो स्वीट एज दे आर राइट नाउ सो आई रिमेंबर वंस आई हैड एन एपल दैट आई लेफ्ट इन माई कार इट डिट गो बैड इट डिट गो बैड फॉर टू वीक्स 
and when I chomped into it, it was exactly like as fresh. Scary. As so scary. <laughs> it was one of those, you know, those Chinese apples that we called it. I know. <laughs> like Xiaomi apples. So, the, so it's so interesting that all these, like for example, apples as well. As a kid, I hated apples because they tasted so bad. Yeah. And if you remember, yeah. apples used to taste really, really bad. They weren't good and sweet yes. and all of this. Yes. And now they've been bred to so that we have honey crisp. Now, in the name only, if it's called honey crisp, yeah. you can understand how sweet yeah. it's going to be. Yeah. So I was talking about this seedless grapes, mm. seedless papayas. And everything is so sweet. My mom, you know, got the seedless papaya some five years ago and she was gushing. I was like, mommy, don't you think there is something intrinsically abnormal that it has been hybridized? And mom doesn't know. But then, so these are not supposed to exist, right? Yeah. I remember on the model health show, Sean Model was once mm. talking about this many years ago. And, and he said that you realize every time you eat a seedless plant, you're having an impotent plant. Correct. Do you want to have an impotent plant? Because technically, that's what you're going to become as well, right? If you're what you eat. So by that a, logic, yeah. yeah. So it's such an interesting. Obviously, you're not going to become impotent by eating seedless yeah, plants. But, but I'm saying it is the thought the, is yeah, important. Correct, saying that you basically neuter neutered this plant before eating it. The whole reason plants wanted you to eat their fruit, which is why fruit is edible, is that after you ate the fruit, you threw the seed, and the seed would grow into another plant. That is their way of telling telling Correct. you that this is edible because they will procreate like this. And do you know how lectins work, work in fruits? It's very interesting. Tell me. So if a lectin, so if a fruit is raw, mm. it is typically green mm. for two reasons. One, that animals cannot spot it, but mm. more importantly, to warn animals that it is not ready to eat yet. Correct. Mm. Only, and it's filled with lectins at this point of time. Mm. So all your raw papayas, raw bananas, all Correct. of these things. And when they become ripe, the plant automatically retracts these lectins so it is safe for the animal to eat. Right. So then an animal can eat it and spread its seeds. Now, what's interesting is that almost all our fruits are picked raw yeah. and artificially ripened. Ripened. Correct. Why? Because during transportation, if you transport ripe fruit, It'll everything be... will squish. Exactly. It'll be gone. It'll yeah. be gone. Raw fruit is hard, so you can transport it. So yeah. as a result, you realize that you're only eating the raw fruit technically that has been artificially Correct. ripened. So fruits, again, I don't eat fru fruits at all. Yeah, yeah. So well. so that's where I am. Uh, I, I eat a lot of dairy. Mm -hmm. So, uh, oh, you're a dairy person? I love dairy. Okay. Works for me. Hmm. I love curd. Hmm. Uh, that's all I have retained out of my ayer roots. Hmm. <laughs> Ghee? <laughs> ghee? Mm. Yeah, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Ghee, butter, paneer, I'll, paneer um, good quality cheese, uh. Uh, you know, all your mozzarella, everything. I eat that. And that's it, yeah. Kitna khayenge. So much variety. So much variety. People are listening to you and saying this person's mad. So much variety. <laughs> She's saying she only mentioned five things. That's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> but there is, that's enough. So, so like I discussed with you, January, I'm going to try this whole carnivore thing let's for a month. Let's do it together. We'll do it together. Let's, let's, and, and let's live whatever, like, let's have accountability on social media. Ha, chalo, we'll say that today I'm eating this, today I'm yeah, eating yeah, this, yeah. and Done. we'll see how it goes. Yes, it will, it's, it's good. The couple of other things I want to tell you, I spoke about what I ate. Now, one, hormonally it works for you. Okay. Okay. Uh, because you're, you're, you are eating the way, you're eating closest to nature, protein and fat. Every protein and fat come in nature together. We know this. A whole egg is protein and fat. If you eat a, a cut of a meat, it is protein and fat. If you eat fish, it is protein and fat. Uh, if you eat paneer, it is fr protein and fat, right? So fr the way your body metabolizes it, it's almost impossible to overeat mm. because all your satiety uh, hormones kick in, right? Second, you keep your, your insulin levels fairly stable and n not that you know everybody comes back at me saying that why are you making insulin the villain I'm not making insulin the villain insulin should spike it's a very necessary hormone and it will when you have your meat exactly it will protein is also insulinogenic in nature but the, the problem with insulin is it is when it is constantly at elevated levels and then it reaches a point of saturation in your body making you sick Right. So there are multiple things actually with insulin. Yeah. The first yeah. thing is that insulin is an anabolic, anabolic An, yeah. ho hormone. Growth which hormone. Means, yes. That means that your body is constantly in a state of growth. growth. But your body is not supposed to be in a constant state of growth Correct. because when it is not growing, it's repairing. Correct. Right? So it is removing all the stuff that is junk in the body. Correct. Which is why fasting is exactly so important. Exactly, I was coming to that. Which is why when you fast autophagy and all of that, that that kind of tends to happen. Second, you're fuller longer mm. because 
uh, the, the thermogenic effect of protein and fat is much much higher okay. than than your other uh, sources of foods so the the tendency to snack and to eat all of that kind of goes away right uh, and and finally you automatically will bring in i mean i can't believe i have to say this but today if you're able to go Five hours without food in between two meals, that's good. Yeah, for celebration. Us, that celebration, exactly. That itself is a fast, yeah, snacking, actually. Correct. So, because snacking is such a bane, constantly eating. So, these are all the benefits. And then you will see changes in your skin. You will see changes in your mood. Um, you will see your focus levels get better. The one feedback I always get, and not... I just I don't even have to go carnivore, and I'm sure uh, Ashton you would have experienced this. The afternoon slump, the lethargy, uh, you know, after a carb carb meal or a mixed diet meal, the need to reach out for a coffee at three thirty four to kind of like I need to wake my all these factors kind of diminish and go away. Yeah, which uh, are uh, holistic living factors, right? They aid your productivity in in so many other ways. Absolutely, and that's the thing. I think if you are a non-vegetarian and you've never attempted something like this, try it out for a week. See 100%. what it is like. People will make fun of you. Fine. Your family will think yeah. you're mad. Fine. Okay. Everybody thinks I'm mad. It's perfectly Same. right. Yeah. Right. It's, Same here. And and I the only way that I like to so for example on the Habit Coach podcast, every single habit that I talk about is something that I've tried. Hmm. Right. Hmm. Now that means that I'm constantly trying new things, and people are constantly criticizing you for this. Like for Correct. example, this beard that I'm growing is an experiment <laughs> of what I'm trying to do. Right? Yeah. And it's perfectly fine. People think you're mad. No problem. Stick to it and see how you feel Important. because everybody will feel differently. Correct. Like I said, we have all have our different models hmm. for vegetarian, non-vegetarian, the way that we want to eat. We all have our different body types for what is going to work, what is not going to work. Correct. Right. Some people need to eat a large quantity. Some people need to a small quantity. It's yeah. All variable. You have to experiment. Yeah. And not just blindly follow what's on your plate. Correct. And this is what I exactly what I tell everybody. You don't have to listen to Sangeeta Ashton, Dr. Jason Fung. It's you don't have to listen to anybody, right? Your experience for about a week, 10 days will tell you how you feel. Now, one caveat I want to add, whenever you move from one way of for anything for that matter, whether it's meditation, whether it's fasting or whether it's a way of eating or whether it's building a habit like sleeping early the transition period is there and i i'm sure you will have more to say about this as a habit coach absolutely there is a bit of discomfort that will happen for some bit of time stay on the course until you you get over that and i get this a lot in in the low carb you know i'm having a headache i'm i'm um, i'm 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 feeling like my stomach is empty it's a transition or i'm having constipation your input is changing your body will feel different it takes 2 to 3 weeks to settle down yeah. right the way that from a habit coach point of view yeah. i would say start your your meat based journey would be by first trying to go as low carb as possible Correct. that would be step 1 step 1 then just change one meal to 100%. a complete carnivore meal the yes. easiest is breakfast where you just have an omelet correct right or you correct. have fried eggs you have scrambled Anything. eggs yeah easiest to change then after that do your second meal yeah. typically that will be dinner dinner because more you know, in control more in control lunch you're out somewhere Correct. you may be eating out dal yeah. rice will happen yeah exactly right? <laughs> so dinner is the one that you can control next Correct. so have your breakfast and your dinner as much as carnivore as possible and then slowly transition your lunch yeah this is exactly how it functions in my program nothing nothing changes drastically hmm. first e e interesting you brought this up this is how i even transition into fasting like. the first step to fasting is three clean meals not snacking it's not directly jumping to a 16 hour fast of course it's going to be very very difficult three clean meals then look at your um, so look at yourself your body are you more eating in the morning person or a night person then which is easier for you to skip which is non negotiable because of family like i know that every research points out to the fact that if you eat as per circadian rhythm which means eat early in the morning and end your uh, eating window by sunset that works for you doesn't work for me because oh what's your eating window i tend to eat at about 8 o'clock hmm. 8 8:30 hmm. that's because family uh, work also personally i'm like that hmm. right uh, and when my son is around that's that's when my meal happens and for me that's non negotiable correct 
I know that. But if you are somebody who can who can who can actually uh, stop your last meal say at six o'clock, good for you. Hmm. If you're somebody like me, I'm somebody who naturally doesn't feel hungry till two. Hmm. So for me, skipping breakfast comes very naturally. So these are the things you have to try and experiment. And none of it is set in stone. There is so much variability and personal nuance to it. Correct. You have to figure it out for yourself as you go along. Yeah. So. Sangeeta, how can people A, get in touch with you hmm. and B, what should they get in touch with you for? Okay. Um, let me answer the second part first. Hmm. So I work uh, in the entire spectrum of what we call metabolic syndrome. Um, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll define that. The only the only uh, areas where I don't work is the mental health area, which is dementia and Alzheimer's. And some obviously cancer. Um, that, needs a, that, that needs a completely different support. But the the more uh, prevalent uh, variety type two diabetes mm-hmm. PCOS mm-hmm. Um, if there is a cholesterol issue so imbalance in your cholesterol ratios etc um, fatty liver non alcoholic fatty liver children as young as thirteen have it it's devastating people have it for three years and four years and the doctors are sending them away with nothing so fatty liver obesity for sure. Okay, so these are typically the areas. Autoimmune, autoimmune, yes, autoimmune IBS okay. is something that I work with. Hmm. Um, IBS, arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, and all of that should also be part of. But it, no? this is all anecdotal. Um, so it's not I, enough research. Not on enough this. research. So I'm if you if you want to trust me and work with see psoriasis. I've right. worked on psoriasis uh, and rosacea. Correct. Using the carnivore diet, hmm. ultimate. Elimination, people, absolutely. and it's plants causing it. Huh? Yeah, you yeah, know it absolutely. Plants uh, cause it. Correct. Even your arthritis, but uh, yeah. anecdotal. Anecdotal. We don't have the yourself. full research of it. Uh, leaky gut. Leaky gut for sure. Big one. And um, somebody just told me three three months of uh, antibiotic abuse, mm-hmm. leaky gut, and bone broth is resolving it for them on yeah. my DMs. Right. So the entire spectrum of IBS I work with, but IBS is tricky. Hmm. Very tricky because it's also anxiety related. Mm. We know this, right? So all these areas and weight loss, I, I, I consider obviously obesity as one of the uh, big, uh, uh, obviously, uh, metabolic syndrome. These are all the areas that I work with uh, and everything is outcome based. I look at your blood markers and I always say this, focus on your health markers, the weight will come off. It's not the other way around. Cholesterol, all those things. Yeah, yeah, all of that. It comes down or goes up with carnivore? Good question. Hmm. Your triglycerides will go down. Your VLDL will be very low. Your HDL will be right and your LDL will be high. Now we can keep debating the LDL issue. Correct. The important thing uh, is the triglycerides come the down. The most important thing is the ratio between um, uh, your, your um, triglyceride to HDL ratio should be as close to one as possible. Greatest predictor of cardiovascular risk. LDL cholesterol, we can do a full another podcast about it. Hmm. How Mr. Ansel Keys did oh, hey, this. We forgot, we didn't, um, we, we didn't we'll even do discuss that. Now, that. Yeah. But anyway, we can do it again. We'll do but we one. know we know this if you're in the nutrition space. So these are all the areas I work with. I am also learning to work with food addiction, mm-hmm. emotional eating. Mm, uh, that's a slow practice. Uh, that takes a different kind of a skill set. Now, where you can reach me, Twitter is where you can reach me. I am at the rate S-A-A-I-Y-E-R. Or if you look at Rewrite Your Story on Twitter, you'll find me. You can also reach me on my website, www.rewriteyourstory.in. And Sangeeta, you're on Instagram. If you find me on Twitter, it's that's the best way. You know I'm on Twitter all the time. Lovely. And we'll have all your links in the show notes below. Great, so for great, sure. Great. Sangeeta, thank you so much for coming on the Habit Coach podcast and having this very lively discussion <laughs> with us. Thanks for having me. I know I reached out to you um, and uh, it's opened uh, completely. I mean, I, I found the Habit Podcast, so the Habit Coach Podcast so helpful. Um, and uh, let's let's do the, the carnivore challenge in January. Done. Okay, so if you're listening to this, and hopefully this will come out before January. Sure. And if it doesn't come out in January, then in January, we are going to be doing the carnivore diet. Yes. So just join in. Join and, in. And, and you, actually, it will be a great uh, learning experience when you do it along. Yeah. And we can discuss that. Yeah. So Done. good fun. Thanks. Lovely. Thanks Thank so you much. so much. Bye.